and uh, verse two. The spirit of the Lord, the spirit of the Lord shall rest upon him. Shall rest upon him. The spirit of wisdom and understanding. The spirit of wisdom and understanding. The spirit of counsel and might. The spirit of counsel and might. The spirit of knowledge and the, of the fear of the Lord. Yeah, the spirit of knowledge and of the fear of the Lord. Hallelujah. This is a prophecy about our Lord Jesus Christ. And there shall come forth the rod from the stem of Jesse, and the branch shall grow out of his roots, and the Spirit of the Lord shall rest upon him. Again it is, uh, it is said there in Isaiah 61, 1 or so, there also we read, the Spirit of the Lord is upon me, because the Lord has anointed me. The Spirit of wisdom and understanding is regularly going to the message. The Spirit of the Lord shall rest upon him. So what does the same Spirit of God upon Jesus Christ? Hallelujah. Since I believe that we also have Jesus dwelling in us, we also will possess the same qualities. Hallelujah. And, and also Jesus said, We who believe in me shall do these things and more than greater things than these she will, he will perform. So, hallelujah. And where are we today? We don't know where. <laughs> according to this word. But I believe in that word a lot. He says, he who believes in me, he shall do greater things than me. Because uh, I also believe when Jesus was on earth, God the Father anointed him with his Holy Spirit. We know like Acts 10, 38. Right? Please speak. And he was going about doing good and healing people who were uh, tormented by the evil spirits. Right? 10, 38. How God anointed Jesus of Nazareth. Yeah, how God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Spirit and with power. With the Holy Spirit and with power. Who went about doing good and healing all. Yes, who went about doing good and healing all. Who were oppressed by the devil. Amen. Who were oppressed by the devil. For God was with him. For God was with him. So I God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with Holy Spirit and power. Holy Spirit and power. And he went about doing good, healing all who were oppressed by the devil. Now lots of people are, most of the people are oppressed by the devil. So they need healing. They need deliverance. They don't have the strength to resist the devil and fight him and come out of him. So, hallelujah, glory to God. So what happens like, so if then those days when Jesus was on earth, God anointed him with Holy Spirit and power and he went about doing good and healing people, of uh, redeeming people from the devil. And how much more the glorified Jesus who dwells in us. Hallelujah. The glorified Jesus, the resurrection power along with his resurrection power. Oh, that's, uh, that's what Jesus meant. He who believes in me shall do these things and greater things than these means is now that we have the glorified Jesus dwelling in us. So every Christian should come to know of it and we should know the power of God that we have, hallelujah, through Jesus Christ. And if we really have uh, Him dwelling in us, we also should, uh, you know, uh, keep concentrating, meditating on these things. Hallelujah. That's what I used to say. The glorified Jesus is there in us means we will have to do greater things than what he did. Not for glory, not for our own glory or credit or fame or anything. But God who sent his son Jesus Christ to come back and now he has sent his son into everyone's heart. The glory is by Jesus. So that's what we should know. And here, let's come back to the Isaiah 11. The spirit of the Lord shall rest upon him. Given John's gospel, uh, we read that God had anointed Jesus without measure. Hallelujah, with the Holy Spirit. And uh, the Spirit of the Lord shall rest upon him. And also, I mean, the, uh, I think the introduction the Lord, Lord is giving. Even uh, Luke's Gospel 4, Matthew's Gospel 4, and now if you read, Jesus was taken into the wilderness by the Spirit of God. Right? He was taken by the Spirit of God for what? To be tempted. Then, 40 days. Hallelujah, by the Spirit of God. And the word of God says in Luke's Gospel 4, I think, if you read, he came back with the power of God. Hallelujah. When he was moved by the Spirit of God in the wilderness to be tempted. And 
he was brought back by the, with the power of God performing many miracles and wonders. So when, when did the power of God be in operation, we have to be put into all kinds of tests and temptations. And we have to, with the help of God, Holy Spirit, the word of God, fight it out. And we, we will come out with the power of God. Mm-hmm. Hallelujah. So that's the principle God has. He doesn't give everything in a platter and give it to us and to enjoy. No, we have to go through the past. And that's how we also uh, maintain strength and power of the Lord. So we come back to Isaiah 11. Uh, two. The spirit of the Lord shall rest upon him, the spirit of wisdom and understanding. Hallelujah. The spirit of wisdom. See the combination. That's what I love this verse. The combination given here. Wisdom and understanding. Not mere wisdom. Wisdom along with understanding. Hallelujah. So, wisdom, uh, even we know we have many times heard the James 3rd chapter. It talks about wisdom. Hallelujah. And uh, James 3, 14, right from 14 onwards if you read, it speaks about the four, kind, four types of wisdom there. The wisdom does not the wisdom does not descend from above. Yeah, previous verse also. But if you have bitter envy, if you have bitter envy and self-seeking in your heart, and self-seeking in your heart, do not boast and lie against the truth. Yes. Um, Thirteen also see beautifully. Thirteen. Who is wise and understanding among you? Yeah, who is wise? Wise wisdom goes along with understanding. It should go along with understanding. Hallelujah. Who is wise and understanding among you? Let him show by good conduct. Yes, let him show by good conduct. That his works are done in the meekness of wisdom. Amen. That his works are done in the meekness of wisdom. Hallelujah. The wisdom of from above is that. But if you have yeah. bitter envy, bitter envy, and self-seeking in your heart, and self-seeking in your hearts, do not boast and lie do against not the truth, and lie against the truth. Hallelujah! If you have bitter envy, see, if you have the real wisdom and that's understanding, then it will have it will do works in the meekness of wisdom. Hallelujah! Meekness is very essential. But then if you have bitter envy and jealousy, self-seeking, selfish ambition, selfishness and in your heart, do not boast and lie against the truth. This wisdom does not descend from above. This wisdom, envy and self-seeking is not from above, but is earthly. It is earthly, sensual, sensual, demonic, demonic. Hallelujah. This wisdom is earthly wisdom. Sensual wisdom, demonic wisdom, and this wisdom will not have understanding. Hallelujah. But the wisdom from above is first pure. For where envy and self seeking exist, for where envy and self seeking exist, confusion and every evil thing are there. Confusion and every evil thing are there. I remember like some years back, I think in 2000. And we asked to speak in a big university college and our students and the lecturers and all that. And the college principal also was attending. And then I spoke on this uh, earthly wisdom, sensual wisdom, demonic wisdom and heavenly wisdom. The father was taking seriously with all the notes and he said, I have never heard such message so far. So wonderful. <laughs> so like, uh, oh, I wanted the people to know, even the non-Christians, how the wisdom is operating on the earth, it's not from above, it's not the real wisdom. It's demonic or earthly and I had to, I was explaining more that we don't have time now. So, hallelujah, glory to the wisdom does not, uh, for where envy, self-seeking exists, confusion and every evil thing are there. Hallelujah. Verse 17, but the wisdom that is from above, but the wisdom that is from above is first pure. Is first first what pure? Then peaceable. Then peaceable. Gentle. Gentle. Willing to yield. Willing to yield. Full of mercy. Full and of fruits. mercy and good fruits without partiality and without hypocrisy. Hallelujah. So the wisdom of, from, from above is totally pure, peaceful and he, totally heavenly wisdom. Hallelujah. Not like the earthly, crafty, cunningness, jealousy, 
hatred, bitterness, division, all these things are earthly, demonic, sensual. So we should not possess that kind of wisdom and that kind of wisdom will not have the understanding at all. So chapter 11, Isaiah chapter 11 and verse 2 speaks about the wisdom, the spirit of wisdom and understanding. Understanding is what? Hallelujah, glory to God. Uh, but God also in Psalm 14 and verse 2, I think, he speaks Psalm 14 and verse 2. God is looking down to see upon the Lord is looking down from heaven upon the children of men. Upon the children of men to see if there are any who understand. Yeah, if to see if there are any who understand who seek God. Who seek God. Hallelujah. He is looking down to people. Don't want people down to see if there are any who understand. But became futile in their thoughts. And their foolish hearts 
hearts were darkened. And the foolish hearts were darkened. Hallelujah. And then verse 22, professing to be wise. They wise. Professing to be wise, they became fools. Wisdom is there, but what is not there? Understanding is not there. Hallelujah. So, professing themselves to be wise. Why? Why the having their understanding that and why? Although they knew God, they did not glorify Him as God. That area we have to be very careful. The glory due to God only. Hallelujah. He says, my glory I will give to no one. Hallelujah. My, this is my glory. My, I am the Lord. I will not give my glory to anyone. So we have to be very careful. Never thought, never I say anybody, you know, maybe a hosting or praising anybody, you know. We have to praise God alone. Glorify God alone. Hallelujah. We can appreciate people, we can encourage people, not praise anybody. Hallelujah. Praise be to God. So we have to keep glorifying Him, keep praising Him, giving thanks to Him. We need to glorify Him also possess a thankful heart. I would always see like what is happening in heaven. There the angels keep on more glorifying God and praising God. That's what he expects from the blood God people, the deep people to do. Hallelujah. From the earth, there in heaven sufficient glow of a glorification, sufficient glory and glory is being given. But from earth, people fail to glorify God. If only we glorify him from earth, the power of God will be poured upon this earth immensely. Hallelujah. The glory of God will descend upon this earth. Hallelujah. That's what, see, like why God should say like all power and all glory, all praises, all honor. I used to wonder in Revelations now, why the angels should say this, this only, no? Why should they keep telling him? Hallelujah. The more he is glorified, the more the enemy is powerless. The enemy wants to grab the glory, all these things. He wants to stop people glorifying God. Uh, so, uh, that's what I felt like. So that's why he is not allowing perverted people are not able to glorify God in the way that they have to glorify him. Now give thanks to him, be thankful to God. That also he stops. He they do everything in the form of God, the name of God in the form of Godliness, but they are not able to glorify him. I would say that's what uh, even uh, Apostle Paul says, even prayer he says uh, Philippians 4 6 what? You know, be anxious for nothing and everything. Let your prayer supplication be made known to him. That's all. With what? Thanksgiving. The thanksgiving is very, very important. We always need to possess a thankful heart. And uh, gratitude should be there. And always we need to, hallelujah, keep praising him, giving him all the glory. We have to be very careful about it. The more we do that, the more we will be filled with the glory of God. That's another thing. Hallelujah. The glory of God will fill us. Oh, so the understanding also will be bright and enlightened. And the wisdom and understanding will be there in us. And if the understanding of God is rather uh, enlightened, the life of God will be there operating in our lives. Hallelujah. We will be lively Christians. Amen. Praise be to God. So we move on to the next point. So if you keep talking about the understanding, then we can see lots of things God will give the people of his way. And he's calling them new, he's calling them all these things. Even he says the hawks and every animals, they have their understanding about their master, but my people, they don't have understanding. Even Isaiah, Jeremiah, he just is pouring out his heart saying that my people lack understanding. Because of that, they perish. Because of that, what, what happens to them? See, all this open, this wide mouth, wide and swallowing of people. Who want to please leave that? Hallelujah. Hell is opening his mouth wide and for swallowing people. See, what I said, 5. 5 13. Therefore, my people have gone into captivity. Therefore, my people have gone into captivity. Because they have no knowledge. Because they have no knowledge. Their honorable men are famished. Mm. And their 
and hunted you dried up with thirst. Yes, even a gentleman of his age. Hallelujah. The Holy Spirit teaches His people. Only thing is, 
we will have to realize and apply our hearts and minds. Relax. Be not like be anxious about that. How do we get the words? How do we? How do I get this message? I'm not talking in this message. No, 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 to be honest, so the Lord will put the words in my heart, and you know, if I keep only thinking about it, the Lord gives me more verses and connects all these things. I mostly I don't prepare, so I don't have any notes before. <laughs> Hallelujah. So it is the Holy Spirit. He is not easy. He's for everybody. Every wants everyone to learn from Him. Hallelujah. And in addition, only we have this gathering, and we need to share the truth of God. One, we have to keep edifying one another. Hallelujah. With the help of the Holy Spirit. So that's how God wanted it to be. But people are so relaxed; they don't want to use Holy Spirit in their lives. Hallelujah. We really have to give room for the Holy Spirit to counsel us, to guide us. We have to, what do we do? Fast for 40 days or 21 days. Even if I fast for 40 days, I don't get any voice or anything from God. We fast and pray to, you know, fight the good fight of faith. But the Holy Spirit is there daily. If you only apply our hearts and minds, He will teach us. If we are furious and angry about somebody and you know, if you are very, you know, what to say, <laughs> not in a good mood, immediately you will show me the words like, you know, do good for evil and bless those who curse and all this he will keep reminding me. <laughs> and then yes, Lord, with all so much difficulty, you have to say yes. Hallelujah. In those days. Like that, the Holy Spirit is there to remind us of the teachings of our Lord Jesus Christ whenever we go away from Him, from the teachings of our Lord. Hallelujah. When we go on our own way and go in the wrong track, the Holy Spirit will convict us, convict us through the Word. Some people wrongly say, Oh, oh Holy Spirit, come away, oh, me, oh, Holy Spirit, help me brushing the teeth and you know, all these rubbish things. These are not the works of the Holy Spirit. It's, they tell you all this. Holy Spirit will speak through the word. He is the spirit of truth. Through the teachings of our Lord Jesus Christ, through the word of God only, Holy Spirit will convict us. Hallelujah. So that's how we can be guided by the spirit of God. So he is the spirit of counsel. See, David also in the Old Testament itself, every move of his was led. Or, or he was moved by the counsel of the Lord. Hallelujah. He was always seeking the counsel of the Lord. He was always taking the counsel from the Lord. So he was always successful. Amen. He was always, whatever God, God in waiting, uh, he was waiting, he was always successful, victorious. Wherever he went, he came back victorious. Hallelujah. So, Hallelujah, glory to God. That's how, hallelujah, glory to God. We need to take the counsel of the Lord. Holy Spirit has been given to us for counsel and word. Praise the Lord, hallelujah. Counsel and might. So we read here uh, in uh, Proverbs 12, 15. Eyes. The way of the fool is right in his own eyes, but he who heeds counsel is wise. He who heeds, heeds counsel, see they are interlinked. He who heeds counsel is what? Wise. wise. And then 13, 10. 10, 10. 10. By pride comes nothing but strife. Yeah. But with with the well advised, well advised of the council people is wisdom. Is wisdom. So wherever the council is, I think there is wisdom. And then, uh, Hallelujah, glory to God. Twenty eighteen, Proverbs twenty and eighteen. Plans are established by counsel. Plans are established by counsel. By wise counsel, wage war. Yes, by wise counsel, wage war. This is what David did. By wise counsel, wage war. David did it literally. We God's people. 
We are daily waging war against the spiritual hosts of wickedness in heavenly high places. Hallelujah. So we have to get the wise counsel from the Lord. And we have to have the discernment. And we have to wage the war against the evil forces that come against us every now and then. Hallelujah. Every now and then. So plans are established by counsel, by wise counsel. Wage war. Get the counsel from God. Different, different attacks, different, different types we have to deal with. So, we cannot use the same strategy. So, for which what do we need? We need the counsel of God. Oh, hallelujah. Once we were, uh, literally one man was uh, possessed and he was, so after we were having a fasting and prayer, we were in the initial stage of my ministry and uh, all finished eating and all that in somebody else's house. And there came a man and started making all noises, came for prayer and started praying, he manifested, he was started manifesting, he started manifesting. And he was uh, started manifesting, review all, no, all the people who came for the fasting prayer, they wanted to prove God's power, they were shouting and yelling at him, asking him to go, and he was all aware, he was rolling on the ground and singing all the songs. Singing all the uh, you know, Christian songs. And uh, all uh, he speak, he was such a so he was a plumber or somebody. Like he was speaking so fluent English. Some spirit and things were speaking in English. And then they were praying, they were, they were just they then they started singing this pa 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 wonder working pa. He also started singing along. These people are also not letting me do anything. They are also trying to do some things and let them do. And he also started saying, I was thinking, what this is becoming a scene and what is happening? <laughs> what only should I do, Lord? I just sat down for a minute. And I was not giving it up, but then I was sitting down. Like because these people also were screaming to the top of the voice and he was also uh, singing to the top of his voice and we were, we were uh, doing it in a somebody else's uh, rented place. So I was worried that these people should not get into a problem. And uh, I said, I just went away and sat down and then I was asking for God's house. Now what do I do? How do I deal with this? The Lord said, then the Lord prompted me to speak the word. And I said, the Son of God was manifested that he might destroy the works of the Lord. Then he said, no, 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 don't say that. Then I said, to the blood of the Lamb, to the word of testimony, uh, we shall overcome you. And he said, no, 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 please don't. I'm screaming. And I said, the God of peace shall crush Satan under the house of feet. He just ran out of the house. Whether the devil went out or he went out, both of them went out. For the time being, I was relieved. Hallelujah, glory to God. After some time, he came back sober and then he said, I want my Bible back. And he took the Bible and went out. So what I'm saying, have to wage war of getting the counsel from wise counsel from God and then wage the war against the devil. We have to get Lord in this situation, in this problem, how do I deal with this? How do I talk? How do I speak? How do I resist? Should I resist or should I flee? Hallelujah. So we need to understand many times I also like you know we know like God has given us power no? so we let's fight. <laughs> As our demons, all these guys like, you know, <laughs> immediately I was so much for God that I wanted to uh, do things for God. So that had affected me also, many times. So without the proper counsel of God, we cannot deal with all these veins of war, with the demonic things. We have to, all of a sudden, um, I think Pastor also was saying, all the fasting and prayer, and because of that, like how God gives us the grace, gives the shows us what is, what is the strategy and all that, how people are doing that. We know like, you know, some arrows like things will come, lots of things. And uh, I said, it is not fasting, how can we say, what we won't, we even uh, uh, thought about taking a fast. All of a sudden, the Lord will put it into a fast. We won't know for what. So, okay, I'm not fasting, I will say three days sometimes. 
sometimes he say, I am on fasting. So we won't know what we have to take fasting, not like a rigid way. But whenever the Lord leads, we take, then only we realize, oh, oh then we can understand the spirits of powers of darkness surrounding and pray, standing ready to wage for a Jesus. Uh, so like that, whenever the Lord prompts us to do things, when we do it, there is something behind it. Hallelujah. And God gave so much, what happened, that's what I was sharing in the first year of the month. There are people trying to do evil things, but what happens, God makes us to fast and pray and receive power, stay awake and pray and receive power. Hallelujah. Be on knees and pray and pray and receive more power, so we become more powerful only because of those evil doers. Thanks be to God for that. <laughs> Hallelujah. You know, without them, we will be also relaxing in our Christian life. So for that sake only, I think God has kept all those people to keep us always, you know, <laughs> active in the Lord. So that's how we have to have the counsel and because of that, we know we wage war. We what uh, the from uh, Isaiah 11, might too, with might. So we, when we receive the counsel of God, along with that, He gives us the strength, the power of God. Hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. See, without the counsel, if He gives the power, we will misuse the power. There's always a chance to misuse the power. When we have the right counsel only, we can use the power of God in the right way. Hallelujah. So, power, counsel and power, they both go together. The might of God, we know like that. When the Spirit of God comes, we shall receive power. And uh, as in Ephesians 6, 10, we know you be strong in the Lord and in the power, power of His might. So we need the power of His might. We will have received the anointing, but gee, God, what we read about Jesus. God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with His, uh, gave the anointing and the power. Anointing is different, power is different. different. Uh, Jesus went to the anointing, into the wilderness and he was tested and came back with power. Hallelujah. He went with the anointing. He sat the baptism, he received the anointing. Went with the anointing, came back with power. So the anointing and power, power we should stand the tests and trials. We should not run away. We should not give it up. We should not, you know, show our back to the devil. We have to stand against the wiles of the devil. We have to equip ourselves. We have to seek God's people's help or the, the fellowship is very essential. Hallelujah. Glory to God. So, what do we do? Uh, so, like that, uh, we need to be strengthened in the inner man by the power of the Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. All this, we should keep ourselves equipped. And then we move on to the next point. The spirit of knowledge and of the fear of the Lord. Hallelujah. The spirit of knowledge and the fear of the Lord goes together. Both go together. Uh, please read Proverbs 1 7. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of knowledge. Hallelujah. Knowledge. Fear of the Lord. When you have the fear of the Lord, that does it. You will receive the knowledge of God. Hallelujah. The mere knowledge is not okay. People have lots of knowledge about the word of God, about God, everything. But Apostle Paul speaks about it as knowledge of some. Knowledge what? Mere knowledge will bring haughtiness in people. We see that. Yeah. First one is 8 1. Now concerning things offered to idols. Now concerning things offered to idols. We know that we all have knowledge. We know that we all have knowledge. Knowledge puffs up. Knowledge puffs up. But love edifies. Love edifies. Mere knowledge alone puffs up. But love edifies. So having the knowledge of God along with what? Fear of God. Both should go together. With love for God will bring the fear of God in us. And even if, uh, who will be puffed up again if you read, I think in First uh, Timothy, the third chapter. 
First Timothy third chapter sixth verse. Not a novice, not a novice. Let's be puffed up with pride. Let's be puffed up with pride. He fall into the same condemnation as the devil. He fall into the puffed up with pride. What place it? He fall into the same condemnation as the devil. What condemnation was given to the devil? The same condemnation is said. A picture of puffed up with and because of that pride. Novice, novice means a new disciple. Many people, many people nowadays have been receiving uh, little knowledge, you know, I know everything. And they are puffed up. And what happens? Puffed up with pride, they don't respect the authorities given by God, they don't respect church, they don't respect, they don't want any authority, anybody to, you know, say anything. So they want to be independent and then what happens? Many fall away. Fall into the same condemnation as the devil. All demonic, uh, uh, what to say, qualities they develop in the form of godliness. So we have to be very, very careful about all those things and not a novice being puffed up with pride. Fall into the same condemnation as the devil. So what we what we are saying? The knowledge of God, right? Knowledge of God and the uh, fear of God. So this knowledge of God, that's why Apostle Paul is the best example. He was so much after the knowledge of God. Uh, in uh, Philippians 3rd chapter, he says to acquire this knowledge of God. Hallelujah. Oh, for the excellence of the knowledge of God, I count everything but loss and rubbish. Hallelujah. So he was counting it so precious. He was wanting to receive more of the knowledge of God. And he was totally relieving himself of all those things that was that were holding him back from receiving the knowledge of God. He was willing to lose them for God, for the knowledge of God. Hallelujah. So the, the very uh, the, the see it's, it's not the very uh, the acquiring the knowledge of God is so easy. But to retain the knowledge of God, to increase in the knowledge of God with the fear of God is only very important. Hallelujah. And this knowledge, uh, because see the religious people in the time of Jesus and every religion, even now, religious people, oh hallelujah, they, they had so much knowledge about God than ourselves, than even now, like this Pharisees, Sadducees, and all those people. They had the knowledge of God, but they couldn't recognize Jesus as Son of God. The knowledge for some love infants. But who were able to recognize Jesus? Sinners, publicans, common people. They were able to recognize him. Even the devils, demons recognized him. But religiosity couldn't recognize Jesus. That's why we should be we cannot be religious at all. We do not want religiosity. We want to be spiritual people with understanding, with wisdom and understanding, with counsel and mind, and with spirit of knowledge and fear of God. Hallelujah. With religiosity, if you know too much of word of God and if you have some grace and you know talents and gifts and operation, gift operation, that's it. They forget about God, in the name of God, they may do so many things and that's why uh, Jesus also in Matthew's Gospel chapter 7, he says, in those days they will come and tell me, Lord, Lord, we have prophesied in your name and we have cast out demons in your name, we have performed miracles in your name, then I will tell them, depart from me, you workers of iniquity, I know you not. God doesn't recognize such, hallelujah, people. I know you're not. Is he telling the lie? No. He is not. He is ignorant. Totally people who walk according to his word, according to his counsel, he is mindful, he is, he is attentive, he looks upon them only. Hallelujah. He looks upon people who tremble before his word. So he is not at all aware of what is happening other side in the name of God. He is not aware of it. Then who is operating? Hallelujah. We 
if somebody, sometimes, well, if somebody was uh, talking to me the other day on the phone, then that lady was telling, like, you know, uh, about her husband, she was telling, see, he's not at all, you know, uh, obliging and he's still a non -mean. So some people are praying, break his leg, break his hand, and praying for do this and that, treat him nicely. So I think that's, that prayer only I should pray. I said, if you pray that prayer, then you become a, uh, uh, you become, uh, you become one in the army of the devil. The devil will listen to the prayer and answer the prayer, but you are not in the, in the army of God. You will end up in the army of the demons. If you want to do that, do it. In the name of Jesus only, you will be permitted to do it. So many people do this manipulated prayers, even the servants of God. Praying against one another, praying against other people. So instead of now we are waging war against the evil spirits and witchcraft and witches and sorcerers and evil rulers, now we have to pray for this uh, manipulating prayers. Pray, pray, people who are praying the manipulated prayers. Lord, nullify all these manipulated prayers. Make it void, Lord. We have to pray like that. Once I pray like that, <coughs> Having said yet, my thing was not like that. I could feel that the demonic uh, thing. And that time I was uh, a long time back, and I was I knew that somebody was. Uh, and some people came and told somebody is praying, manipulated prayers like this. One person came and told me on the face that I've been praying that uh, I know I was cursing your ministry and praying <laughs> like that. On my face they came and I said no, pray, nobody's cursed for my ministry, what God has in store for me will all happen. So, and then say sorry for it. They'll say sorry, then again the spirit will start operating, then again they do the same cursing, then again uh, they'll feel sorry. Uh, these, are, these are people who are benefited to us. So what happened like that, and uh, once, uh, then I said, Lord, this uh, one, one person was there. He was having a church also. So he used to tell his church members, if you don't do like this, if you don't do according to this, if you don't obey this word of mine, if you don't do, then God will take away your child. If you don't do this, you will lose your hand or you lose your leg. Accordingly it will happen. And if you don't do like this, you will be run over by a lorry. Yeah, or your, or, or, or something like that. Weird things he used to tell us. He said things to happen and so we could be very afraid to, you know, oppose him or to think it. By force they have to obey him and be under his control. For the fear of all these things. And these, those people, you know, like, uh, they used to come to me for prayer and tell all these things. So much I'm afraid of this. Curses. I was praying like, you know, this severe thing and something like that, uh, small with this headache and all that. I said, Lord, rebuke, I rebuke this all manipulated prayers and I in the name of Jesus, deliver me from immediately went off. And even Pastor Ajit, once he was saying, six months he was not sleeping in the night of six. All night he was sleeping. He was wide awake in six. And then on fine day the Holy Spirit prompted him to pray about this manipulated prayers. He said, I nullify all this manipulated prayers and send them back to the Holy <laughs> Immediately he, he got prompted one person uh, that this person is praying like this. Immediately from that day onwards he got delivered. Six months he didn't sleep in the night, he's just imagine. Whole night, no sleep. Day 10 also not much sleep. So, uh, like this, this manipulated prayers, all these things are happening among all Christians who are not in the right track. They have joined, enjoyed themselves with a demonic world without their knowledge, in the name of God, in the form of guardians. So we have to be very careful about, even we be prompted, provoked. Sometimes when people do things against us, but you know, Holy Spirit will interfere and say, turn the or prayer in the right way. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Glory to God.
So we have to be very careful about all these things and uh, and that person, after that, uh, heard that he was, uh, we heard that he passed away, how a lorry, a truck ran over his head and he died. He was cursing everybody like that and his own life became like that. So all these are the things, uh, uh, all the things are happening in this world. So, where are we? So the knowledge of God, spirit of knowledge and the fear of God should go together. So the knowledge, when mere knowledge is not going to help us, and knowledge we need to have with reverence for God. Hallelujah. With a trembling for God. With a fear of God, we should possess the knowledge of God. Because very, very important, the knowledge of God will be where it happened. Uh, in the Garden of Eden, the knowledge of good and evil. Hallelujah. So the garden of Eden, God told him not to eat of the fruit of the tree of God, God nor tree of uh, uh, knowledge of good and evil. And uh, because, hallelujah, since because they ate that, they lost the knowledge of God. Only good and evil came into them. Now, I mean, because when we receive more of the knowledge of God, <coughs> second Peter, first chapter, I think, there we read, through the knowledge of God, we acquire the divine nature of God. Hallelujah. The more we increase in the knowledge of God, the more we will receive, acquire the divine nature of God, though always the more the evil nature will get out of our system. Hallelujah. If you read, we'll read that and finish with that. Second uh, Peter, first chapter. His divine power, as His divine power, has given to us all things, uh, or has given to us all things that pertain life and godliness. That pertain to life and godliness through the knowledge of Him who called us, yeah, by, by glory God. and virtue, yeah. hmm. and then by which, by which have been given to us, by the knowledge of God, we, we have been given to us. Exceedingly great and precious promises. Uh, exceedingly great and precious promises. That through this you may be partakers. Yeah, through this you may be partakers of the, of divine, the divine nature, nature having escaped the corruption that is in the world through lust. Hallelujah. So the knowledge of God we need to improve, increase, and with the, uh, the fear of God. And both combination is very good. So we saw. Wisdom and understanding, counsel and might, might and knowledge and the fear of the Lord. Shall we close the